Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Petition Bowling Club. Uh, thank you to Mark, who's doing the sound tonight, and Susie for doing the venue. Um, we're going to start in a moment. I just wanted to give you a little bit of context for this evening. And I was thinking I'd talk about the first concert. And then I thought to myself, well, actually, the, the first thing I, I wasn't even in or involved with. And that was probably a show that Jack did called God and the Poets, with uh, Lindsay Burke playing the organ in the um, Congregational Church in Pitt Street. And I think somewhere there was a recording of that, maybe it's in the archive, Kel, maybe not. But in a way that was the set the, the model. And then the model changed and evolved. We did a show in 1973 called Fleeting Touch. And there's some programs of that floating around. We did another show called The Sound of People, and there's some programs of that also uh, with some of the people who read in that here tonight. Um, that was, I think, about 73, 74. Then in 74, I guess it was, we were at the Seymour Centre, and we did The City and the Song, which to some extent sort of the, the paradigm evolved again. And then after that again with Sons of Anywhere, with um, Fast Colours, with Sound Travel, with a whole series of um, extraordinary evenings, um, of which I have very fond memories, as I think we all do. So we're sort of dipping back into some of those memories tonight. Um, all of those shows were rehearsed to within an inch of their life. Um, like this one. <laughs> like this one. Um, but audiences back in those days were very tolerant, because they were younger. Um, so be, be kind to the old folks on stage, you bastards. Um, and to get us started, I'd just like to begin with one of those important poems from, from the past that you probably all remember. If you meet someone you know, you say, hello, 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 hello. And if they say good day, they say to me, hello, 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 hello. Now that we are mature, I hope that you enjoy the feature. And before we go, we'll say again, hello, 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 hello.
aged <laughs> our aged states. We're trying to read the song next to you. We're very good at that. <laughs> it's Helen. Ah, I'd like to introduce the beautiful Helen Wattier. Would you come up here and read a poem for us, Helen? Right, you right, right. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm introducing him. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Zoe. I'm going to read a poem that I learned when I was 15, like just a few years ago. Okay. George asked whether I would read it this evening. And I was like, yeah, no problem. I remember that poem. And then I got it back out and had a look at it. And the poem in my memory was quite different in parts from the actual poem. Many are of other of our absent friends too.
concert with us but made a, a, a memorable impression with his material um, like like many of us Richard's gone on to do other things and uh, has been a respected academic and widely published writer as has Terry so um, this is just the beginning of, of careers that we're re revisiting tonight um, another person who had a, an amazing career after Pax was Wayne Harris and uh, as you're probably aware, Wayne had a couple of albums and also um, has had a stellar career as a uh, illustrator of children's books and won a number of awards for his work. So it's the nature of talent that it, it will out. And, um, and Wayne was one extraordinary talented individual. He couldn't come tonight. He sent us a terrific message and, and uh, we're greatly cheered to know that we had his support. Um, and we will try to do some of his material, but without Wayne, it's pretty hard to do Wayne. So, um, but we will see later on what we can do. I did, though, want to add something that some of you may remember, which is a poem that Wayne, Wayne did. Um, this was in the Fleeting Touch, and he must have been about 17 when he wrote this, I suppose. Stone. In this wind, nothing could keep us still. Nothing, unless we were stone. And we lacked the patience, you and I, and the conviction. And with our luck, it would probably be a nasty stone. Something grey, chipped and pitiable. And with my luck, it would. I feel vulnerable and scared near this wind. It is almost godlike. Too human, too much conviction. If only we were stone. And then it would drop us like we didn't matter. Weighty things are dropped that way. And we would cry, if stones do. And I suspect they only weep. They lack the compassion. We are not even important enough to be bothered by a godlike wind. Though in some ways stones are steadfast gods. No matter, we lose both.
Richard Pitta Harland. <laughs> forgotten how deeply sick that song is. Right? <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Put that in the show. Oh my god. My children are here. My tweets are here. What are you doing to me, Richard? <laughs> okay. Um, the next song is um, got two names. Terry wrote it and he called it the Quest song. And um, Zoe remembered it and called it something else. He said, oh, you got to put that song in the show. <laughs> so here it is. The dream is funny. We just rushed them downstairs. Tempo, remember the tempo? You said faster. Faster. Faster, you said. Faster, faster. 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 Thanks for being here tonight, everyone. It's fantastic to see you. songs called Museum Peace, um, which Greg and I will, will sing, and uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, speak for itself.
thank you. And thank you, Wayne, for allowing us. That was magical. Um, during rehearsal, Terry pointed out that the, the fusion of Zoe's voice and Greg's voice seemed somehow to put Wayne in the room. You know, that those palm resistive voices seemed to fuse into Wayne's voice when he was here. It was just fantastic. Um, this is a, next piece is a, a piece I did with Morel Day at the Seymour Centre in 1974. And um, Morel had found this list of uh, names. And um, as part of the City and the Song, um, Jeff played a little blues theme. And Morel and I, uh, remember if you've been to the downstairs at the Seymour Centre, there was an upstairs gallery that's a sort of 360 gallery. And one of us, I can remember, she was upstairs, I was downstairs all the way around. And uh, we did this little um, Carefully rehearsed improvisation, just like this one. It was more reading than improvisation. I didn't, I couldn't let this one. You'll see why then. Come on.
Pontoc Perkins. Eddie Guitar Burns. Jimmy Witherspoon. Willie Dixon. Chuck Bo Diddley. Big Walter Horton. Little Walter. The Butler Twins. Ah. Baby Boy Warren. Big Baba Fulton. Lightning Hopkins. Furry Lewis. Rabbit Brown. Lonesome Sundown. Jeff Pollard wrote after we went to a folk concert or a gig down the Narrow Lawn, something down there, and uh, Jeffrey wrote this song. And um, yeah, as we said during the rehearsal, it's back. <laughs> if you remember it, please sing along. Uh, yeah, too. If you don't, if you remember it, then please sing along. Please sing along. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm around Dane. Please. Never wanted to. Uh, with a, a strap, so I'm, I'm a lounge room guitarist these days, so I'm sitting on my chair, and <laughs> here's Araloo and Valley. <laughs>
wasn't as we rehearsed it. It was good to have a new, different version of surprise energy. We've got a surprise energy, but you know. Of course. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. We, we put it all up in the. That was in the cloud. It was in the cloud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, now we have to do. Now we have to do the encore.